it sounds Italian, so why not call them just um, Italian boy differential equations? <laughs> Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. We are back at differential equation theory videos. And this boy right here is one of the many reasons why mathematicians are in need of second order linear differential equations. So let's just dive right in. I would like to present you solution methods to Riccati, Riccati, Riccati differential equations. I seriously don't know how to pronounce his name. It sounds Italian, so why not call them just um, Italian boy differential equations. <laughs> and those are just differential equations of this form right here. You see, we have y prime being equal to some functions of x, and also we have this quadratic in y. So this is just a polynomial in, in y, you could say, with some um, constant or um, functions of x coefficients. Okay, so we can consider two simple cases at first. So why not set s equal to zero? So let s be equal to zero. What does this imply? Well, then we end up with y prime being equal to p, and I'm not going to write this with respect to x all the time. It's, it's just a track, plus q times y. And this thing right here in itself is nothing but a first order non-homogeneous differential equation. We know how to solve this. Hey, we are done. Cool. And the second case, let p be equal to zero. That also implies that y prime is nothing but q times y plus s times y squared. And this thing right here, we know how to solve this. This is nothing but a Bernoulli differential equation. Yay, we are done. So, so that's quite cool. And now let's start off with the real solution method for differential equations of this form. To solve something like this, we want to reduce it. And how can we do this? Well, we want to make use of simple substitutions. So why not define a new function of x? So let t of x be equal to, and this substitution comes in quite naturally, to be honest, s times y. And we have a few conditions, so we want t to be differentiable, we want s to be differentiable, we don't want s to be equal to zero, all of this crazy stuff. If you proceed to solve something like this, you might notice a few things you need to consider, a few um, yeah, restrictions on s and t. I just said that those need to be differentiable, so why not differentiate both sides and see what we get? So t prime is nothing but s times y prime. We have a product here, so why not use the product rule? So we have s prime times y plus y prime times s. And you might notice we have y prime here, so why not plug the definition for y prime in and see what we get? <laughs> so we have s prime times y plus, um, I'm going to write everything out, s times p plus q times y plus s times y squared. And now we can just distribute this s into everything and see what we get at first. So we end up with s prime times y plus s times p plus q times y times s plus s squared y squared. And don't forget what our original substitution was, actually. T is nothing but s times y, but that also means if s isn't equal to zero, y is nothing but t over s. And well, we can plug those definitions for um, t in, or for y in, to make everything with respect to t. So at first, right here, we have um, t times s prime over s, plus, and now we have s times p, that's not a problem. Overall, this is just another function with respect to x, since s and p are just functions with respect to x, plus q times t. I hope you can see where this came from. And now we can bring this squared to the outside to end up with just t squared. Okay, cool. And you see we have two parts where t is a common factor, so why not factor this out? Overall, we are going to end up with t prime. This is our left-hand side being equal to, okay, now we have t squared, let's bring it into this order, plus t times s prime over s, plus p, um, no, I'm sorry, plus q, <laughs> this way, plus s times p. And you see, this thing overall is just a function of x, and this is also just a function of x, so let's rename it. So we end up with t prime being equal to t squared plus t times capital P, of x, I don't know, plus um, capital Q of x. And now we ended up with another quadratic in t in this case. So we need to introduce another substitution to get rid of this little problem. 
So the snake substitution isn't really um, natural, but some smart people, probably also this guy, uh, Italian boy, um, thought about how to solve something like this. So let's just introduce it and talk about it a little bit. So we want to let t be equal to negative phi prime over phi. And you might notice we don't want phi, which is also a function of x, to be equal to zero. We don't want it. And also we want phi to be differentiable. Okay, and you see we have t prime on this side. So once again, it would be nice to differentiate both sides and see what we get. And that also kind of implies that phi must be twice differentiable, at least. So I would like to rewrite this a little bit more into a negative phi prime times phi to the negative one. Let's do that way. And now I would like to differentiate both sides. So also differentiating this and differentiating this right here. So this is supposed to be a one, not a prime. Okay, and now you can also use the quotient rule. I really don't care. I prefer using the product rule because quotient rule is just a special case of the product rule. Never mind. Let's proceed with this side right here. So at first we have negative phi double prime over phi. So this is the first step. Okay, and now we have plus. So at first negative phi prime. Now we need to drag the negative one down. So times negative one and reduce the power by one. Phi to the negative two and also take the inner derivative, which is just phi prime. Okay, cool. But what is this overall? Well, this negative one and negative cancels out and we have phi prime, but squared over phi squared and we can bring the squared to the outside. So let's conclude everything. We now know that t prime is nothing but. So we have um, negative phi double prime over phi and then positive phi prime over phi but squared and I hope you can see this but this thing right here is nothing but t squared once again so this right here is just t squared B because if you remember correctly this thing right here was our t and if you square t you also get rid of this negative sign right here so this is quite smart actually some people thought about this that's why we have this negative sign right here this random boy Okay, cool. Now we have t squared here. And why not bring this t squared to the other side? That also means that we have our negative phi double prime over phi being equal to t prime negative t squared. But remember what our t prime is? t prime is nothing but this right here. And that's actually quite cool. So we end up with um, t squared plus t times capital P plus q negative t squared and you see this and that is going to cancel out so we are getting rid of the quadratic in there and now we just have this stuff right here but we also know what our t is t is nothing but this uh, stuff right here so we end up with so negative phi double prime over phi being equal to so we have negative phi prime over phi times capital p plus q and now we are basically done. All that's really left to do is to multiply both sides by phi. We didn't want it to be equal to zero, so this is quite cool. So we end up with negative phi double prime being equal to negative phi prime plus q times phi. <laughs> okay, and now we are already done. You can multiply both sides by uh, negative one. So you get rid of this and you have a negative sign right here. Um, yeah. And you can bring this stuff to the other side. Let's do this real quick. Um, I don't really have enough space here, so let's put it here. That's equivalent to phi double prime, negative phi prime times p. I forgot the p. Don't forget your p. Ugh. <laughs> negative, uh, positive q times phi being equal to zero. And just like I said in the beginning, this type of differential equation is one of the reasons why we need second order linear differential equations. Homogeneous at that. Yeah, and that's basically it. And now you can actually express your y with respect to this phi right here. Um, let's put it here real quick. Don't forget the first connection we had, y being equal to t over s. But what is our t? t is nothing but this stuff right here. So we end up with negative phi prime over s times phi. So um, this is supposed to be a y. So if you want to find your general solution for y, you just find out the values for phi. It's going to be um, 
a general solution consisting of um, two linear independent solutions. And well, then you can just plug it in and then you are done. Maybe I'm going to make use of this um, technique in an exercise video. I'm probably going to do so. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. If you want to support the channel a bit more, link to my Patreon is in the description. I'm doing all the stuff for free. I would highly appreciate all kinds of support from you guys. You guys are still awesome and you are always going to be. I love you guys. You helped me keep this channel alive and it's a lot of fun producing videos on this channel. Up until the next video, um, I'm once again in this room, so let's grab something cool. Um, have a Seagate day. And it's not even too dusty, so that's quite amazing. See ya.